How is it going, everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins, and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Canada. Today, we're going to be discussing one of the rarest nickels of all time that you probably had no idea even existed, and that is the Canadian 1996 Attach 6 nickel. This piece is extremely significant and sought after in the Canadian numismatic world. It is a unique air or variety that was produced by the Royal Canadian Mint in the year 1996 and has only gained major popularity and value within the last five years or so. The attached six on the coin's date and inscription gives it a unique appearance making it highly desirable for collectors worldwide. In this video, we will explore the historical context surrounding the production of these five cent coins and delve into why they hold such importance in Canadian numismatic history. Additionally, we will discuss the distinguishing features, significance among collectors, and also its potential value if you were ever to discover a legitimate example. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. Also, make sure to stay to the end of the video if you would like to find out how much you can get for one of these coins if you were to find one. And then without further ado, what do you say we get right into it and discuss the Canadian 1996 Attach 6 Nickel. Let's get it, guys. Nickels have always held a special place in the world of coin collecting. In Canada, they've been part of the coinage landscape for over a century. The journey began in the year 1858 when the province of Canada, which included Ontario and Quebec, introduced its first nickel or five cent coin, commonly referred to as fish scales by those versed in Canadian numismatics. These tiny little coins had a weight of 1.16 grams and a diameter of 15.5 millimeters and were composed of 92.5% silver. When we fast forward to 1922, Canada decided to switch things up a bit. The Canadian 5 cent coin underwent a transformation. It gained some weight, now coming in at 4.54 grams, and it also increased in popularity because it was now composed of the precious metal nickel and similar in size to the American nickels of the time. The legendary Prince of Canadian Coins are five cent pieces from the year 1921, which are among the rarest and most valuable circulation coins in Canada. The number of known specimens is thought to be somewhere around 400 to 480. The majority of the 1921 mint run was melted down after the Canadian government approved an act in May 1921, enabling the switch to the bigger nickel coin. At an auction in January 2010, the coin that was thought to be the finest known specimen, which was a PCGS graded MS67, sold for $115,000. The Canadian Numismatic Company then sold it to a private collector for $160,000 at the beginning of 2012. By 1937, Canada had decided to give the nickel a makeover and what better symbol to grace its reverse side than the iconic beaver. The beaver has long been a symbol of Canada's industrious spirit and played a crucial role in the early development of the country. From 1937 until now, the beaver has proudly graced the reverse of our five cent coin with the exception of a few commemorative issues throughout the years starting in World War II. In celebration of Canada's 100th birthday in the year 1967, a special five cent coin was issued. This special commemorative coin features the image of a rabbit. This coin is a favorite among collectors, not only for its design, but also for its historical significance. There are some notable errors in the 1967 rabbit nickels and some of the other denominations for 1967s that can be worth some insane amounts of money, but we're going to be covering all of those in a future video. The one tip that I will give you for your 1967 coins is to check if they are out of alignment. Usually Canadian coins will come in metal alignment, meaning the orientation of the obverse and reverse are facing the same way. Sometimes the 1967 coins will come in coin alignment, which is the standard for American coins, and sometimes they will just come with a rotated die, meaning the die could be off axis facing in any direction, and this can add some huge premium to the coin if you can identify it correctly. In the year 1982, the Canadian Mint switched from producing nickels in 100% nickel composition to cupro nickel, which is composed of 75% copper and 25% nickel. This change was made in an effort to cut costs due to the rising price of precious metals in the global market. 
Now, you know you're becoming a coin collector when you start referring to your pocket change as potential treasures, and finding a 1996 nickel in your pocket change might just make your day. Coin roll hunters and collectors alike have become aware of a rare Canadian nickel error from the year 1996 that can be worth some really decent money even if it isn't in the greatest shape. If you were to check the Coins in Canada website a few years ago, you would only see two varieties listed for the 1996. These two varieties are the Near and Far 6. Usually you'd be looking for the Far 6 and that variety can actually be worth a couple hundred dollars if it hits in the high MS mark. To tell the difference between the Near and Far 6, you need to look at the final digit 6 in the date 1996 and then look at its proximity and distance to the bottom of the D in Canada. If the 6 is very close to, but not making contact or touching the D, then you have the near 6. If there appears to be a space or gap between the number and the letter D, then you have the far 6, and the far 6 is actually the more valuable of the two varieties. But what if I told you that there is a third variety that is actually much more rare and valuable than the previous two? You could say one 1996 nickel to rule them all, and that is the attached 6 variety. Now, whether due to severe dye deterioration, cracks, or any number of other production problems that can occur during the minting process, it would seem that a rare error or variety escaped into circulation. To identify this, you need to look once again at that final digit in the date, and if that six is touching or making contact with the D in the inscription Canada, then you have yourself a fairly valuable Canadian nickel. Now before we get into the value, some of the details and specifications for this coin, if any of these are off, it might indicate that it is not legitimate. And you might think it's actually silly to check all of these little specifications, but you would be surprised at the counterfeit coins that can be purchased online these days. Coins like the 1921 half dollar and five cent piece, the 1948 silver dollars, even the 1944 tomback nickel, and even some minor modern errors and varieties, I've seen listings for all of these counterfeit coins, some of which only sell for a dollar or two. So it never hurts to be thorough, especially if you already went to the work of identifying the attached six. So the specifications for the 1996 nickel, it is composed of 75% copper, 25% nickel. It has a weight of 4.6 grams, a diameter of 21.2 millimeters, a thickness of 1.76 millimeters. The designers and engravers for the obverse of the coin are Dora de Pedri Hunt and Ago Aran, and G.E. Kruger Gray and Thomas Shingles for the reverse of the coin. The edge of the coin is smooth, it is non-magnetic, and it has a die axis in metal alignment as is the standard for most Canadian coins. Now in terms of value, Coins in Canada doesn't actually list low end price values. The estimate starts kicking in around AU50, and they do evaluate this coin at $134 for an AU50 example, but I do think that it is worth anywhere from $10 to $20 for a G to VG example of one of these coins. People want them. They are definitely a good example of a Canadian error and some significant die deterioration if the D is connected to that six. Now, when you start to get into the MS mark, you see some pretty high price jumps for this coin. It can be worth around $150 for an MS 60. But if you are to look at the far six 1996, that coin can actually be worth $300 for an MS67. So I don't doubt at all that this nickel could easily be worth up to $1,000 to $5,000 for an MS67. If you were to find one that was in a high mint state, your best chance at this point of finding one that is that nice is probably from an uncirculated roll. And never say never because I have found 1967 rabbit nickel uncirculated rolls from the bank before. These were original bank rolls. So I know that there can be stuff like these 1996s out there. You just need to keep your eyes open. And if you find an uncirculated roll, and there is an attached six as the ender, the chances are most of the coins inside that roll are gonna have the attached six variety. Usually when you have an error or variety, most of the coins in the roll will have the variety or none of them will because all of the coins are struck and packaged consecutively. So if you do ever happen to come across a 1996 uncirculated roll of Canadian nickels, the first thing that you can look for is this attached six. And if you do see that on the ender of the roll, I definitely suggest you buy it. But even if the entire roll is far sixes and you send them in to be graded and they score an MS66, MS67, it is still a fairly rare and valuable nickel. You do not want the 1996s. 
with the close six that one is the least rare and valuable of the 1996 varieties so if you find any of those while you're coin roll hunting just chuck them to the side now what do you guys think about the 1996 attached six nickel what would you do if you ever found a legitimate example or if you ever have found any of the coins discussed in this video let me know down in the comments i would love to know also i would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up subscribe if you're new and ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released but I think that is pretty much going to do it for this one, folks. So until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one, y'all.